In today's video, we'll be looking at the Cypher query language for Neo4j. This is the main language you'll use to interact with the data stored in Neo4j. In this section, we'll specifically look at how to create nodes, relationships, unique constraints, and indexes. In this video, we will look at how we can use Cypher to create nodes. We'll define what a node is, we'll define how to create a node, and how to add properties to our node. These properties can later be used to find the nodes you've previously created. Nodes represent objects. In the case we'll be going through, we'll be solving the six degrees to Kevin Bacon problem that we discussed in our earlier video. To recap, people have been challenged to find relationships between two actors. One actor is always Kevin Bacon. The challenge is to find how Kevin Bacon relates to another actor. The example we gave before was how do we find a move the example we gave before was how do we find the path between Kevin Bacon and Vin Diesel. Today we'll set up the data in Neo4j to allow us to do just that. In the case of our actors and our movies, the first thing we'll do is to define a data model for our nodes. In this use case, our nodes will be actors or movies. Looking at an actor, we'll create a unique identifier in an ID field. We'll set a name, a birth date, and a birthplace. In the case of Kevin Bacon, he was born July 8, 1958, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Because he's our target and our favorite, we'll start with ID 1 for Kevin Bacon. Cypher allows you to create nodes with a label. In this case, we'll create a label of actor and we'll define properties for each of our nodes. When using the create statement, you can pass in a label and one or more properties. For instance, we can create an unlabeled node with an ID of 1 with the command create left parenthesis n left bracket id colon 1 right bracket right parenthesis for most of these examples we'll be using the neo4j built-in browser this browser gives us a great visual representation of the data we have stored and once we get into building relationships it'll show the relationships as well when we first open the browser it'll tell us the version of neo4j we're using and it has some shortcuts on the left that allow us to browse through our database. In this case you'll see we have no nodes, we have no relationships, and since I've been using this to create properties before you'll see the property lists. We can also see information about our system including the size of the data stored. For the example we just showed we'll execute that create statement to create an unlabeled node with an ID of 1. In this case we will return that node that we just created so the browser can display it. This representation shows you that you have a node that has an internal ID of 82, which for this purpose we don't care about, and this node has an ID that we provided of 1. Looking at the browser, we can look at the individual rows returned. It'll represent the node. We can see it in a more traditional relational database view, and we can also see the code that was responded. We can also see the code response from the backend API call if we want to look at it. In this browser, you can store your favorite queries. For instance, I have a query that will return all nodes in the database. I have the queries that will set up our data for today's example. And my favorite destructive query to detach and delete all nodes in the data store. You will never use that in your production environment. So looking at this cipher, we can look at the full cipher statement to create our actor node for Kevin Bacon. Starting with the first create statement, we created a node with an ID of 1. The second line, we added the properties, name, birth date, birth city, and birth state for our node. And in the third and final line, we added the actor label. Let's see what happens when we run this in the browser. Now 
When we run that query, it will return a visual representation of that node. We can click in the browser to change the size, the color, and what primary attribute is shown on the node itself. And before the next example, we'll clean up the data. Now remembering back to our data from the first lesson, we found our path from Kevin Bacon through Tom Cruise, John Totoro, Tyrese Gibson, and Vin Diesel. For this example, I created a script. For this example, I created a cipher script to insert the five actor nodes into Neo4j, setting the appropriate properties for each of them with a unique ID, their name, birth date, birth city, and birth state. Let's run that in the browser. Because we created five nodes at once, and we did not return those nodes, Neo4j just gives us some metadata about our transaction, telling us that we added five labels, five nodes, and we set 25 properties. Using our favorite queries, we can return all of those nodes to show that they were all created. So far, we've created the actors. Now, let's move on to the movies. In our story from getting from Kevin Bacon to Vin Diesel, we needed to load the data for these five movies. Fast Five, Transformers, Revenge of the Fallen, Color of Money, A Few Good Men. The data attributes I chose to populate is a unique identifier in an ID field for each movie, as well as the year the movie was created. The cipher looks very similar to creating our actor nodes, but you'll see the primary change is the list of properties. Now we have a name and a release date, as well as an ID. And the label changed. We note we are not using an actor label, we're using a movie label. Let's run this in the browser. We'll do the same. We'll create all four movies at once. Neo4j will tell us that it added four labels, created four nodes, and set 12 properties. Now when we return all of the nodes in our database, you will see we have more information. Let's change the color to show a distinction between movies and actors. Now you'll see that we have five actors and four movie nodes.